Here's the brief news from the world over this week. The career of another media and entertainment icon is apparently over amid sexual misconduct allegations. Matt Lauer, NBC News' longtime anchor and co-host of the signature program, The Today Show, was fired this week after a female colleague and others came forward charging Lauer with sexual impropriety. Confronted with visual evidence, NBC News fired Lauer. This firing is the latest in a string of high-profile, powerful men whose careers ended amid sexual misconduct allegations. More on the cultural effect of these scandals later in the show. Meanwhile, House Speaker Paul Ryan and Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi said Democrat Congressman John Conyers of Michigan should resign in the face of his own allegations of sexual misconduct. Pelosi told reporters Thursday that the accusations against Conyers are serious, disappointing, and very credible. Conyers, who is the longest-serving member of the House, has faced increasing calls from Democratic colleagues to step down as former aides have come forward to accuse him of inappropriate behavior. Conyers has said through his lawyer that he is innocent and has no plans to step down. Conyers was hospitalized in Detroit on Thursday for a stress-related illness. Meanwhile, in the Senate, Minnesota Democrat Al Franken also said this week he will not step down despite admitting to sexual misconduct and accusations from multiple women. Hmm. And President Trump's long-promised tax cut and overhaul has passed the Senate. After 20 hours of official floor debate and a series of amendments, the GOP held together in passing the first major tax reform measure in more than 30 years and delivering the first legislative victory for Trump and the GOP. Ahead of the vote on Wednesday, the president touted the measure at a campaign-style rally in Missouri. Three months ago, we came to this state to launch our plan to bring back Main Street by cutting taxes for American families and small businesses. Today, I've come back to help push our plan for historic tax cuts right across that finish line. We're going to do that. With your help, we can usher in a thrilling new era of opportunity and growth for this nation that we love so much. And world leaders are uniformly condemning North Korea's latest ballistic missile launch. Tuesday's launch demonstrated for the first time Northern Korea's ability to target any part of the United States. At an emergency meeting of the U.N. Security Council on Wednesday, U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley said, if war comes, it will come as a result of further acts of aggression by Kim Jong-un's regime. The dictator of North Korea made a choice yesterday that brings the world closer to war, not farther from it. We have never sought war with North Korea, and still today, we do not seek it. And if war comes, make no mistake, the North Korean regime will be utterly destroyed. More on this and whether the latest sanctions imposed on the communist regime will work later in the show. And Pope Francis renewed his call for open borders and denounced immigration policies that emphasize national security over welcoming migrants. In a message delivered to state leaders around the world entitled Migrants and Refugees, Men and Women in Search of Peace, he wrote that fear of immigrants lessens human dignity and anti-immigration policies sow violence, racial discrimination and xenophobia. Francis went on to implore politicians to practice the virtue of prudence in welcoming refugees and helping them to assimilate. Meanwhile, deadly terror attacks by ISIS continue. Late last week, militants trapped worshippers in a crowded mosque in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula and used explosives and gunfire to kill more than 300 people. This was the first attack on a mosque in that country's modern era that began about 200 years ago. Islamic State fighters used four off-road vehicles to storm the Sufi mosque complex during Friday prayers. Egyptian President el-Sisi condemned the attack, calling it an attempt to halt Egypt's efforts at fighting terror and extremism. And a former confidant of St. John Paul II revealed that the late pope had a prophetic vision of an Islamic incursion into Europe. Monsignor Mauro Longhi, a former student of John Paul's, says the pontiff was a mystic who experienced visions. 
In a recent lecture, Longy spoke of a 1992 meeting with John Paul II in which he described one particular vision, namely Europe would be overtaken by Islamism in the third millennium. The late Pope went on to say that the church of today would have to contain the invasion with, quote, faith lived with integrity. Saint Pope John Paul II was known for promoting interfaith dialogue between Catholics and Muslims throughout his pontificate. However, in his 2003 encyclical Ecclesia in Europe, he cautioned that dialogue with Islam should be conducted prudently with clear ideas about possibilities and limits. And the Archdiocese of Washington is taking the district's transit authority to court after its Christmas ad campaign was rejected. The ad created for the sides and back of buses includes a silhouette of shepherds and sheep on a starry night and it reads, find the perfect gift. The web address at the bottom directs people to an archdiocese dedicated website, a Christmas website, which includes information on Advent and Christmas traditions, a parish schedule, mass schedule, and information on charitable giving. The Metro, as it is called locally, established ad guidelines two years ago prohibiting ads that, quote, promote or oppose any religion, religious practice, or belief. Their decision to forbid the ad, the Archdiocese says, violates its First Amendment rights. They are taking them to court. And finally, at least it's Christmas at the White House. First Lady Melania Trump kicked off the Christmas season this week, unveiling the White House's new Christmas decorations. More than 150 volunteers from 29 states spent 1,600 hours during the long holiday last weekend decking the White House halls. The theme of this year's decorations is time-honored traditions, which the White House said pays respects to 200 years of holiday traditions at the executive mansion. Among the Christmas standards is the 18-foot fir tree in the traditional spot in the Blue Room, featuring ornaments from every state. New this year are glistening wintry branches lining an east wing corridor. The national Christmas tree was also lit by the first family tonight. A happy Advent season to all. It's looking pretty, and I like the ballerinas.